weeks ago, Rachel Ghoul said that there was going to be a fire that he was going to use as a forge to forge a dark knight out of Bruce Wayne. And we saw the city on fire. Tonight we see the beginning of that happening. Welcome to the heart of the stories we tell. My name is Rob, and tonight I will be reviewing... Gotham, Season 4, Episode 21, One Bad Day. Last week, I said they should have entitled the episode Last Will and Testament. This week, I think they got it almost spot on. Except I don't think this is going to be one bad day. I think this is the beginning of a very bad sequence of events. Bruce's new best friend is about to get bad. And Gotham's supposed to find out exactly how crazy crazy can be. And what happens when someone who's a genius is also the enemy. Now luckily, they do have some heroes around. Maybe not superheroes, but people with badges are heroes. Of course... All of that doesn't mean much when there are continuities where the Joker drove even Superman insane. So, what hope does anyone have? But okay, for those of you that don't know what I do here, I review stories as they come up, and then I do theory videos twice a month on Sundays. I do throwback Thursdays to do older stories. And if all of that sounds interesting to you and you want to hear my insane rambling thoughts about stories, click subscribe. Join our little community. But for now, the shadow of Rachel Ghoul has definitely fallen across Gotham, and it's fallen hard. The episode begins where the last one left off. Everyone thinks Jim is dead. Everyone thinks that everyone that was near that bomb died. Let's talk spoilers. So once again, it's stop spoiler time. Bah, da, na, na. So if you remember, Jerome's plan was to drive the whole city insane. Well, Jeremiah's plan is to wipe the slate clean, start over again kick over the board, start again with new pieces, so to speak. He's planted bombs across the city. He's got a dead man switch like his brother, although he's smart enough to have an off switch for it. And he's still going on and on about how Bruce is his best friend. He's kidnapped Alfred, and there's this really, really great line, because he tells Bruce he knows he's at the police, so he can't go to the police, and he'd know if he does. But, Bruce outthinks him. He calls the other person who he can trust. He calls Selena. And then Selena, when he's apologizing and is all like, look, I know it's a lot to ask, is all like, I'm always going to be there for you when you need me. Aw, Catwoman and Batman are awesome. But as cool as that team-up is, there's a few others that I want to talk about too. Because Gordon's alive, rescued by Riddler, and brought to Lee Tompkins. Well... Doctor does know best. Riddler wants to use this as leverage. Lee wants to save the city and then use that as leverage. Meanwhile, the Joker has decided to have what he calls a transformative experience for Bruce. And now I want to take a quick step back and remind everyone that there are multiple players in this game. And we're about to run into others. But the most important thing is we know where Bruce is going to end up. So then we have... These guys. The Gotham City Sirens and Penguin. Well, they've grabbed their own little thing and have decided that they're going to blackmail the Joker. Can I just say, there is no world where that ends well. Where you think you can intimidate the Intimidator. Or that you can outthink the Planner. But, Penguin actually does a pretty good job of it. He tries his best. Of course, then the Joker pulls a rocket launcher, which works under Gotham rules for rocket launchers, which means that it only blows up the person it hits. Eh, whatever. And then, pretty much, everyone realizes they're screwed. Meanwhile, we still have what is the solution to whatever he's planning, and what is it that he's actually doing. So we need Nygma. We need a problem solver. If there's anything Riddler is, it's a creative problem solver. So, thanks to Lee, he figures out that the map is actually planned. They're going to blow up parts of the city to create a labyrinth. And then as Jim points out, Jeremiah grew up in a labyrinth. He lived in one. So, now we have pretty much everyone we know wanting him stopped. Because, well, you can't blow up the earth. That's where I keep my stuff. Meanwhile, Jeremiah does his best impression of Joker from The Killing Joke. In The Killing Joke, he kidnaps Barbara Gordon, rapes her, leaves her naked and hurt and bleeding to death, and videotapes the whole thing while Gordon has to watch. 
to prove that one bad day is all it takes. Well, in this case, instead of using the woman, they use the butler. And it does make you kind of wonder exactly what type of Batman comes out of this sort of thing. And I know there have been plenty of fan theories about this being Owl Man, but I think that what we're seeing is what it takes to drive someone just insane enough to want to put on the cape and cowl. Well, Alfred's being tortured, though. Barbara and Oswald call into the police and warn them, hey, something bad's about to happen. He's not honoring his timetable, but he also gives them just enough information. And then Jim shows up, because he outsmarted the Riddler, the only way you can, by tricking him into getting punched because he's got a glass jaw. And as such, the heroes now have everything they need. Speaking of which, I almost forgot for a second that Selina is already as badass as Catwoman should be when she fights the Scarecrow. She basically single-handedly takes on four guys, one of which has the fear toxin and a scythe, and comes out not only on top, but pretty much having kicked their asses. Yeah, Scarecrow gets away, but the cat really won there. And so, you know, as badass as future Bruce might be, current Selina still is. But then she's told the experiment's almost over, and we see Bruce getting dosed, and then we see Alfred has been dosed, and you have to question whether or not it's real or just some fear-induced hallucination, but either way, it's pretty messed up. Jeremiah definitely figured out how to hurt Bruce. Of course, even more badass is the moment that Selina realizes what's going on, stops the fear gas, and then someone shoots fake Alfred, because real Alfred's there to save the day. But then come our heroes with badges. Gordon on the TV, and Bullock with the last-minute save. Can I just say I love that they didn't do the red wire, blue wire bullshit that I hate so much trope-wise? He had to guess, based entirely on, they're all the same color and look identical. So let's really talk about how much forethought drew. Jeremiah actually put into, you know I'm just calling him Joker, Joker actually put into this. Joker set this all up from the beginning to force them to have to make choices. And all in all, it was a pretty good Joker plot. Of course it wasn't going to work. But then again, we have all oh, about 15 minutes left on the plot when it doesn't work and he has to kill all of his little minions that he's built up. And as such, we know there's more to come, right? But then, just like any good Joker plan, there needs to be a stabilizing factor. And in this case, someone shows up to be. Rachel Ghoul shows up and does his little magical act. But I love Joker saying, you're behind me, aren't you? That was pretty great. Of course, then Joker shows up at the end, and I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> oh my god, that was so, so horrible. And I loved the fact that there was just... Nothing on Jeremiah's face as he was getting the shit kicked out of him by Alfred. But yeah, we're definitely seeing the birth of Batman here. But I want to talk about that kiss for a minute. I want to talk about the fact that these are two young actors, well, not young actor, actress, two young actors. And as far as I know, they're not dating in real life. They're nothing more than friends. But the look they exchanged, the way they kissed, I mean, damn, that is some chemistry. But then Bruce admitted maybe part of him did go insane the day that his parents died. Which, of course, is something we've all already known. But it's one of those things that the actual mechanics behind how Batman works psychologically is one of those interesting things. Maybe I'll talk about that in one of my upcoming videos. But for now, the Joker's been captured, Gordon's back, and Selina's been shot. What do you think's going to happen next? I think we're in for quite a rude awakening. I think that starting next week, we are going to see Batman. But next week, I won't be doing this review until Friday. For now, if you liked this and enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up and share this video. And of course, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. I'm trying to build this community here. And if you're interested in crazy comic book stuff, I'm the guy you should be listening to. For now... I'm going to start a new series this Sunday of, based on a suggestion that one of my followers had. So leave me a comment. You never know. I might just use yours next. I hope you have a good night, and thanks for walking with me through the heart of Gotham.